I graduated with my master's in curatorial practices from the University of Winnipeg and sort of felt, well I focused on Winnipeg artists. It was sort of a split between Winnipeg artists and outsider, outsider artists. And um, as I was graduating, I kind of looked around and saw that there wasn't really, um, there weren't a lot of jobs. And also, I started to really see that there were so many artists that were working and creating in the city, but didn't have a place to show or to sell their work, which is so important for them in order to obviously to continue doing what they're doing. So I almost like just didn't even think about it too much and just thought, I got it, I, I want to do this. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, I didn't, maybe it was like a, a false sense of um, uh, ambition or something that made me think that I could make it work, uh, but I really did believe in it. And we kind of, right from the get-go, got tons of national attention. We were in art fairs right from the beginning. Um, I was lucky enough, because I was one of the only galleries dealing in critical contemporary art, to um, be able to get into these fairs and, I, uh, and, and then also to be able to get the roster um, that I was able to, to have for a few years. Um, I sort of had, in my opinion, some of the best artists in Winnipeg. Um, and then because of that, because these artists signed on with me right from the beginning, we got a lot of attention. Um, and I was able to put on these really great shows, so I didn't really concern myself with the risks of uh, would it work, even though I knew there's a reason that there aren't a lot of those galleries in Winnipeg, um, because there isn't a huge market here. Uh, again, we have so many people that are making art here, not as many people that are buying the art. So a big shift in my focus right from the beginning was to take the artists from here, uh, while showing their work here, but to take it outside of the city. And so most of my clients actually came from outside of Winnipeg. It was all across Canada, into the U.S. Um, but yeah. Um, I sort of, again, I think if you look at any commercial gallery, it's usually the, the vision um, of the director that sort of sets the tone for what, what they want to show, what they're going to show. So um, after, I've worked in the arts for about 12, 13 years now, all across Canada, and um, it was all people that inspired me or that I found to have uh, the type of career or uh, practice that really interested in me. Uh, like pro, kind of, this sounds weird to say, but process driven. Um, so I'm always interested in the story behind the work, and I found that um, that was really guiding where I was going and choosing artists. So the first year, the mandate for the gallery was going to be only Winnipeg artists, so I'd be known as the Winnipeg Gallery. Um, and then after I saw, uh, sort of surveyed what was happening here, I decided to sort of shift outside of that and bring artists from outside of Winnipeg into the gallery and kind of show them uh, in unison with local artists to have, to start a dialogue between what was happening here and outside. Just Building a roster basically became um, a way for me to show the work that I believed in or that interested me personally. Um, whether or not I thought it was commercially successful or viable, um, that was always something that was really important to me was who are the artists that I believe in, what interests me, and what do I think is, is um, important. But yeah, so I closed my official space at 171 McDermott in uh, July 1st actually was the last, it was the end of the last show. Um, and I just sort of realized that in this market, it didn't really, I found a lot of my resources were going towards uh, maintaining a space, a lot of my energy was going towards being physically present there. When I stepped back and sort of looked at what was happening, um, the, necess uh, like the necessity to travel was something that was paramount and every time I would do that I would have to again uh, put more resources into running the space and maintaining that so it was like everything started to add up um, and I also sort of started to see that you know the traditional gallery model isn't working where you have this one space and you just present shows they run for a month um, it's I think it's a new way of consuming art uh, that's, that's evolving and, and emerging right now. 
Um, and so I like the idea of taking the artists that I'm passionate about or that I believe in and connecting with other spaces that I think would benefit the artists, but also um, if there's another gallery who has a roster that I'm interested in as well, or I see that there's a connection between the artists that I work with and that they do. Um, yeah, that's, that's sort of what I'm hoping to keep uh, pursuing. We have, we're gonna be doing Art Toronto in October. We're looking at doing a show with DC3 in Edmonton. Um, there's another gallery in Vancouver, Back Gallery, that was interested in having me bring in some Winnipeg artists to show in Vancouver. Um, and then like the LA Art Fair, so we're still kind of, I'm, I'm interested, I'm interested in co-curating, but for this particular show, I just sort of kind of came right. in and it seemed to fit because they were like a graffiti collective. You can have an online site. Well, that was the other thing I noticed that most of the people that were buying work from me weren't actually coming into the gallery. They were people that I had connected with when I was doing fairs or throughout my travels. And they would have either seen the work in person at one point, perhaps at a fair, um, or be just aware of them already and would just buy online. Uh, Instagram was huge for me too. Um, I would post photos and then get contact or be contacted regularly. Um, and so it just, it became this thing where I was thinking, why am I putting all these resources into a space that nobody's coming into? I would rather spend my resources in getting the work out. Mm. So, yeah.